I have the privilege of having in front of me both the first and second editions of the Grimorium Verum, and I just wanted to talk a little bit about the difference between the two. Uh, I picked up the first edition of the Grimorium Verum. I thought that it was definitely time that I read through this seminal work, uh, which has been so, so deeply appreciated. This came out about 14 years ago, I guess. And about four days later, <laughs> after I'd ordered this first edition, Joseph Peterson announced the second edition, which is available on paperback and also in hardcover, which hadn't been the case with the first edition. So I thought to myself, do you know what? I won't cancel my first edition. I'll let it arrive. I'll give it a read. And then when the second edition arrives, I'll be able to work out what the differences are. <laughs> the um, conclusion, folks, is that this video is not going to be a play-by-play -play difference between the two books. That would be absolutely impossible. If you want to get into the Grimorium Virum in a serious way, the way maybe Jake Stratton Kent did, and certainly Joseph H. Peterson has, as evidenced by his work here, uh, then this is a lifetime endeavour. It's not something that I could possibly do in just a single week of, uh, you know, of, of working out the differences between the two. But I did want to give you the broad strokes. What is the main difference that is that should make you decide on one edition or the other? Basically, you should also know that the first edition is no longer available. If you want to pick it up, it'll have to be second hand. OK, so the first big difference is that the first edition is much longer. Let's have a look. We're looking at around 230 to around 240 pages for, um, for the first edition, whereas the second edition has only 180 something along those lines, right? 190 pages. That's quite a significant difference in the number of pages. So why wouldn't you go for the first one? Um, well, uh, this uh, came out 14 years ago, this edition has 14 additional years of experience for Joseph H. Peterson, right? And he has not produced something of inferior quality than the first edition, as opposed to what some people on the internet have been claiming. Why would I buy this inferior second edition? It is absolutely not an inferior uh, edition. What has happened is that in the first edition, Joseph Peterson has actually shared with us the raw materials, the the um the French edition, the French edition, uh, uh, at least one of the Italian editions, with lots and lots of notes saying, you know, which one probably came first, which one was inspired by which, which one has got the most likely, uh, or most likely has the most accurate um, uh, sigils and things like this, and, and why they might be the most accurate, and so on and so forth, and. Uh, and and a translation uh, of, uh, um, uh, I, I think it's of the French edition, I, I can't remember, I, um, uh, I've mostly been focusing on, on the translation available in, in the second edition. Um, uh, but, uh, but yeah, at the bottom you get all these footnotes, okay, there's this word here, but in the first, this Italian edition you get this word, and in that Italian edition you get that word, and, um, uh, uh, and so on and so forth. So you, you have to do the work yourself to really decide what makes the most sense, what is the most likely the correct version, and so on and so forth. For those of you who love puzzles, this is great. This is this minus 14 years of Joseph H. Peterson working out what is the most likely best translation, working out what is the most likely the, the best sigil, and so on and so forth. This is the work done for you. OK, and instead of having just the full English text and then the full French text and then the full Italian text and then uh, loads and loads of appendices going, yeah, there was also this uh, this possible sigil. And I found this one in, in a, you know, one of the welcome manuscripts and so on and so forth. Uh, this one just does it within the text, right? So you have this wonderful introduction giving you the full picture of what's going on here, the different uh, manuscripts that were used, the likely best, um, um, well, most accurate translation or accurate most, uh, 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 the most accurate uh, manuscript, should I say, uh, and which one was mostly, was most probably inspired by which. And then you get the French book and the English translation next to it. And then at the bottom of uh, the translation, you get uh, in instructions on what on how the Italian version differs. 
So you have all of the information in one place instead of all of the information in disparate places. Right, where it's where it's really um, valid and useful to have the Italian version because maybe the French version doesn't have the same stuff, then you get the Italian version, right? But uh, but but all of the information that is in here is also in here, just better organized, more more uh, more accessible, and with Joseph Peterson's latest thoughts on the matter right after an additional 14 years of research which uh, you know goes to reason that the more recent research is going to be more accurate he's he's had more more exposure to more manuscripts and more um more information and and better time to to experiment possibly with it, with it all and of course in the meantime there's been Jake Stratton Kent's fantastic work the true grimoire uh, and and no doubt many uh, wonderful conversations between the two right so uh, so really really cool if you're wondering what the grimoireum verum is uh, at all then uh, yeah i i i i recommend checking it out it is one of the darker um, um grimoires available from uh, from the middle ages to the renaissance and um uh, it is uh, yeah it's essentially demonic um uh, work and um uh, does not make use of thwarting angels and i think this is one of the things that jake stratton kent particularly appreciated about it is that it was speaking uh, to demons on the terms of demons right rather than as uh, as pests to be controlled and um, and threatened um uh, which may or may not be your thing right and um uh, yeah let me give you an example here possibly at the, yeah towards the beginning yeah for example this this layman right this layman at the beginning uh, in the first edition there's no layman given and uh, joseph peterson says well there's um you know in in most of the translations there's no layman here there's um uh, there's there's differing uh, laymans you you can or Laman, not sure how to pronounce that. I've only really ever seen it print, uh, uh, spelt on paper. Um, uh, 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 basically, a medal to wear on your chest uh, for, uh, for, for 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 doing magical work. Um, uh, but uh, there's the possibility that it may be something like this that I've added in the appendix. You can go and check it out. Here, it's right there. It's in the text, and he gives you uh, a, a short mention. Uh, that uh, that some of the translations don't have it, but this is in fact the most likely um, uh, la uh, layman laman, um, uh, and and he tells you and that's what it is, and it's right there for you where you actually need it, not not, not you know put in the back of the book as a possibility. Um, my guess is that it's been used successfully, and therefore it's probably good, right? It's, so therefore put it in the text. Uh, so. Um, what else can I tell you about this? Oh, it is print on demand, right? The hard cover is print on demand, and therefore, you know, it's uh, it's of print on demand quality, which is absolutely fine. You can buy it on lulu.com. I'll leave links to this, uh, uh, of course, in the description. Uh, the paperback edition of it is available on, on Amazon. Uh, I, I think that you can still get the paperback of this on Amazon, but rather as secondhand um, or as you know from from other marketplaces and things like this um i think that's for whoever is really really interested in this having both editions is a wonderful thing um uh, but i think that if you're just interested in having a copy of the grimorium verum this is a fantastic copy to have it's a workable copy it's a safe copy um, and it's a copy that's done all the work for you, as I told you at the beginning of the video. There we go. Really, really nice idea for the uh, for the dust cover of this hardcover edition. Um, this is what it looks like on the shelf. This is what the first edition looks like on the shelf. Right, you can see the different different dates there on the on the bottom, which is which is cool. Um, what else can I tell you? It's uh, oh yeah, there's there's some really nice uh, uh, proviso at the at the front. There's a there's a section of this grimoire which is uh, something like um, 
uh, um, amazing spells that you can do kind of thing and they're 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 pretty shocking they're pretty awful things right um and uh, and and joseph peterson does actually say in the introduction please understand that this is you know that, that at least that that section right is just just read it like it's some horror fiction you know don't go trying this stuff out. It's not going to work. Well, I can I can definitely <laughs> uh, go along with that um, with that statement. Uh, it's not going to work. It's it's a lot of fun to read though, um, as long as you're not imagining that uh, you know killing various things are going to uh, produce um, you know are going to get you a, a girlfriend or <laughs> whatever it might be right um uh, so so yes uh, some 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 very silly reading uh, but also some very serious reading right the, uh, the 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 early parts here are workable and they have been worked very successfully by by many magicians um i was interested to see actually the um uh, for example the the sigil of um of uh, Lucifer, which uh, Lucifer in 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 Lucifer's various areas. So Lucifer in the east and Lucifer in the west. Let me try and find it. I think it's right at the beginning. I, I just oh, come on, <laughs> come on. Here it is. Yeah, and this um, this sigil right here, which um, has been associated, I know, by the Gallery of Magic with Clonek, uh, and. That's actually not the case, right? The there's, there's, Clonic has uh, Clonic's own sigil, which I'm not going to find. I, I've just uh, <laughs> uh, clearly, clearly uh, demonstrated that my ability to flick through this is um, is not great. But uh, but Clonic's sigil is actually in here uh, in a in a in a way that actually does make a lot of sense. And you'll be able to see actually that um, here, for example, in the French version, you have the uh, the sigils of the French version. But here, in the English translation, there are some alternatives from Welcome 983. So you can see this sigil that, well, that, that I knew previously as a sigil of Clonek, but clearly isn't, clearly is one of the sigils, one of the uh, the characters of Lucifer, um, is, is represented this way. And you can see how it's actually the same thing. There's this kind of eye in the bottom uh, left-hand quadrant here. Then you've got these two mounds. And this looks like a single mound, but if you look closely, it is in fact two mounds. And then there's, um, there's kind of this, uh, this, this, you know, this cloud-like <laughs> object in the bottom right hand corner. You can see that they are the same thing. You can see that they're clearly inspired by the same things. And um, and you can see, you know, that they clearly have a common ancestry just with uh, varying degrees of uh, of artistic talent and so on and so forth. It's fascinating reading. Um, it's, it's not something that I'm going to try. It's not something that I'm going to um, to put into practice. But it's uh, it's it's just very, very interesting. Very, very interesting. Uh, those of you who are worried you might get cursed by seeing these sigils and stuff. No, no. If it was that easy to, uh, to, to, to get a demon to to uh, to appear, uh, then I, I think um, I think we'd know about it. Um, uh, it. But but nevertheless, this is a workable a workable technique, a workable method. That uh, I'll say it again. Some people have used. Uh, successfully there we go the grimorium virum my uh my overview of the difference between the two books um and uh and and why i think that um if you're only going to get one then this really is the one to get the work has been done for you it's uh it's very good there we are thanks for watching the review don't forget to leave a thumbs up i really appreciate uh, you hitting the like button and subscribe if you haven't done so already and i'll see you very soon with another video take care of yourselves bye bye